right, hello everyone. My name is Chris Rotaro. I'm from Monash Business School, senior lecturer in business analytics, and have been doing uh, reviews for John for quite a while. So, uh, as I mentioned to Damien earlier, I'm just a messenger, so I'm not an editor, but hopefully, we'll translate the message uh, well enough, close enough to you. Uh, what we've got in the slides. So the slides were shared with me by uh, the upcoming editors, uh, Tyson Browning and Suzanne Treadle. They are going to be the new uh, editors-in-chief for John from 2018. So, um, well, uh, the first slide is about John, so there's obviously much to be proud of this journal. So uh, the impact factor, if if I'm correct, should be 6.2, I think. Um, uh, an academic on journal combines both academic and practical aspects, very much driven by empirical research. And I think the mission, I'll be a bit jumpy, uh, the mission statement, if you, so all the slides were actually uh, made by the editors in chief, they even highlighted that it's actually uh, its mission is to publish a regional and empirical operations management research that demonstrates both academic and practical relevance. Um, it's um, um, basically, it, it is proud about the um, methodological diversity and theories, a whole variety of theories that have been published uh, in the last, well, a few decades. Uh, so, um, in terms of academic relevance, um, it contributes to ongoing academic discussions and debates on relevant topics, transcends the immediate empirical context in which research is embedded, takes the context really seriously, and one of the emphasis, as you can see, is that, uh, and that actually can be seen from the new structure of how the review process is done, uh, the departments are actually um, are intertwined with the methods and theories. So the editors represent the departments, which are design, science, healthcare, humanitarian operations, etc., as well as certain areas of expertise. So uh, from so the academic relevance is one of the really key factors. Practical relevance. I found it quite interesting. The last third comment that. Uh, the practicality of the submitted papers should be such that the research topic that you are actually presenting in the paper should be of real high, really high interest to the manager, and the manager should be captivated at least for an hour discussing that uh, sort of a research topic. I thought, well, it's a really challenging task. Um, uh, so, um, a few highlights. Um, widely read and cited. Uh, it around 700 submissions are received per year, so it definitely increased since those 200 papers a few years ago. Um, uh, the, uh, I think in 2016, but the debate started earlier, um, Amiko Akirakiri and um, uh, Daniel Guide came up with this idea of the metric structure of the review process and the overall um, editorial structure in the journal. And this kind of followed, uh, I think, a really influential editorial from the previous editors on empirical elephants. If you probably you, you, you remember this editorial, I think it really set up a research perspective for a number of years where we were told, uh, it was suggested that the key phenomenon that was studied in the journal of operation management is actually the business process, which is this elephant that we are trying to explain, uh, etc., from a variety of perspectives, and uh, it really hard to captivate it in its entirety, and therefore we need all this variety of research methods, approaches, theories, etc. Now, um, I think this is the next step to actually dissect the views, the approaches, and the theories with which you are actually studying this empirical elephant. And that was done by the current editors-in-chief. So um, as you can see, we've got now the departmentalized structure where the department editors um, manage associate editors, and then the reviewers, and I'm one of the reviewers, uh, actually work uh, under the, uh, ed uh, the associate editors. 
So uh, yesterday we had a presentation by Chris Voss on the design science. So uh, Vanak and, and uh, Aravind uh, Chandrasekharan are the current department editors for design science. I haven't seen so many papers published yet, and we discussed it yesterday. Right <laughs> it's kind of yes, yes, one, and hopefully it will get uh, it will get published. So interestingly, one really representative. A paper published in Germ on design science is actually by Vanakin himself on how to write a paper in design science. So we've got healthcare department, humanitarian operations, interorganizational relationships, marketing and retail operations system, strategy, and organization, sustainable operations, and technology management. Uh, now, horizontal comp uh, competences. So these are crossed with the actual, with the actual competences in a variety of fields. Uh, business analytics, which is quite eclectic, right? Uh, in its, as, uh, as, as the term suggests, I think. So case research, uh, um, still a, we've got a, quite a number of submissions on case methods. Econometrics, um, experimental and quasi-experimental research, and my understanding from what I've seen, since I'm interested in, in, this, uh, uh, in the method itself, most of the papers published so far were on quasi-experimental rather than experimental or rather than like pure laboratory experiments. Uh, but uh, Michael, correct me, if, uh, sorry, Damien, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think most of them are quasi experiments. Um, uh, mathematical and stochastic modeling, philosophy of science. But um, I'd like to mention the fact that philosophy of science, I don't think that job, job really accepts papers, pure opinion, uh, you know, opinion pieces on philosophy of science. It still needs to be an empirical piece, which might ingrate some uh, form of um, basically ontological epistemological positioning, but then continue forward and bring it to the method side and to the empirical test of uh, the suggested um, well, a suggested theory. Um, qualitative research, structural equation modeling, economic theory, macro organization, and macro organization. Uh, division tasks, uh, so we've got editors in chief, uh, department editors, associate editors, and reviewers. Uh, as this slide suggests, most of the reviews come from the editorial review board, but obviously the journal also um, invites uh, reviewers from outside. Uh, guidelines to authors. So uh, it's emphasized, I think, in uh, editorials and in the slides as well. The editors do emphasize the fact that the reader as it's been mentioned before, have to leave, uh, read the mission statement, and when they submit a paper, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good practice to supplement it with a cover letter, which actually explains how this particular research piece addresses uh, the uh, mission, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, of the journal. Um, so uh, it is strongly suggested to read the editorials. Uh, some data that was shared, and mostly it's uh, 2000. Uh, 16 data, so it's not complete for 2017 as yet. So about 60, uh, 600 submissions in 16, uh, 700 projected for 2017. Uh, review time is about 90 days. A desk rejects usually within two weeks. Final acceptance, five to 10 percent. So it's a bit kind of there's a, um, the, it's a it's a range here. So I don't know the exact number. Most common reasons: out of scope, no clear contribution, not sufficiently empirical, and lack of quality. Um, so as the journal positions itself, as uh, I think at least some time ago, uh, it was clearly positioned itself as the only uh, operations management journal that is fully dedicated to empirical research that was strongly pushed. So uh, lack of uh, empirical sort of evidence might be one of the key, um, key reasons for rejections. Uh, annual awards, so it established a number of annual awards. <coughs> Jack Meredith Best Paper Award, which was established in 2012, and actually Jack Meredith as the uh, one of the editors of John from 1994 to 2002, he established a Best Paper <coughs> Award uh, sometime in 1990s, and now this award is actually has its name. Uh, I thought Ambassador Award is something to is something quite interesting. I think it's a um, it's it's a sign of the rising appreciation of the cross-disciplinary research and the fact that the uh, John papers are cited in the journals outside the conventional. OM field, so this award is uh, specifically designed for those papers. Then we've got Best Associate Editor Award for Outstanding Service and JOM, and Best Reviewer Award 
for outstanding service in June. And here are the coming incoming editors in chief uh, who will start their service from next year. So Susanna Trudeau from the University of Lausanne and Tyson Browning from TCU. Thank you. All right. I haven't got a slide about me personally. Um, my wife tells me I'm the world's worst networker. And uh, <laughs> she's right. I don't carry any business cards. I'm terrible at that sort of stuff. But um, uh, what I can tell you is it's always very interesting uh, listening to these presentations for me because I'm also on a number of editorial boards and I'm associate editor for uh, IJOCM, JPSM, JOM and JSCM and all four of them have a different structure and a different set of policies. Um, IJOCM has only just this year gone down the path of associate editors. Prior to that it was highly centralised. Pretty much all the papers went to the editor and the editor would make the call and whether the paper went out for a review or not. So that's a new thing for them because they've got um, new editors in place. Um, JOM's gone down the path of departments and then, and then associate editors within departments and then reviewers. And so there's a hierarchy there in terms of uh, who chooses the papers uh, initially to go to departments and then to editors or to associate editors. JPSM have associate editors. Um, for JPSM, if you're an associate editor, you have to choose the reviewers. Um, for JOM, you just get the paper with the reviews. So that's different. For JSCM, it's different again. You get the paper and the reviews, um, and you're not involved, uh, different from JPSM, you're not involved in selecting the reviewers. Uh, my understanding is for IJOPM, um, eventually what they want to do is go down the path of having the associate editors selecting the reviewers. So it, it's worthwhile, particularly if you're coming into um, uh, the publication process early or even if you know, you're in, well into your career, it's really worthwhile understanding how the different journals work and how the process works, um, whether the paper goes direct to the editor and the editor makes the call on the desk reject or whether it goes to the next level down as it does with JLM, for example, it goes to the department level. So every journal is different. Um, and uh, there are some things that it's worthwhile understanding um, how these things work. Um, it's just also interesting to see how different they are and to be working in a different context. Um, for the Journal of Supply Chain Management, um, Mark Miguel, Brian Fugate, and Barbara Flynn are the co-editors in chief. We've gone down the path of a different structure again because below uh, the three um, editors in chief, we've gone down the path of a regional structure. So we now have a, a, um, a European uh, regional editor, an Asia Pacific regional editor, and that's me, and a South American regional editor. So the structure at, J at uh, JSCM is different again from JOM, or JOPM, JPSM, MSOM, POMS, whatever. Um, and then below, uh, the next level down, there are associate editors. Uh, so we're all different and we all do things slightly differently. Background information about the journal. Um, this is a really important slide if you're thinking about submitting work to JSCM because we're an empirical journal. Um, and the current incoming or the new editors as a group have made this point very strongly that um, your paper, in order to be published in JSCM, has to have empirical content. That doesn't mean it can't be a combination, for example, of empirical and modelling uh, methods. That's fine, but there has to be an empirical um, element to the paper, and they're very strong on that. So if you've got a modelling paper in, and you're thinking about sending it to a journal, um, I can tell you that if it's a pure modelling paper and you send it to JSCM, 
uh, with the current set of editors, their policy is, look, there are plenty of other outlets. If you send a paper to JSCM, make sure it's empirical. It has empirical content. Um, very important, there must be a contribution to theory. Um, it can be inductive, deductive, or abductive, um, but there has to be theory in there. It can be theory building, it can be theory testing, it can be th theory elaborating. Um, the inductive thing is a little bit difficult, not the easiest um, uh, area to get a paper published, the whole design science methodology I think is, is, is tends to be in that world, um, but we're very open to um, different empirical methods. Um, we're also we're also um, uh, quite open to uh, publishing papers uh, that are conceptual um, in, in uh, content. Um, personally, I've had a paper published which was purely about how theory should be built in supply chains and in supply chain sustainability. Um, but generally, there, there should be an empirical element uh, to the paper. Um, these are just examples of different orders, uh, different, sorry, different authors. Um, uh, the Williamson paper has had a lot of traction and has got a lot of um, <coughs> citations, as you would expect. Uh, we've had Jay Barney write papers uh, for the journal. Um, we've got a good associate editor and editorial review board. Um, and our impact factor is good. We've had a quadrupling of submissions since 2007. That's the common factor, I think, amongst all um, journals in this area. Um, we're very focused on short cycle times for reviews. Um, the previous editor, um, Craig Carter, was very, very strong on this and has really created a culture within the uh, review board, within the reviewers. The reviews must be developmental um, and, that they, and that cycle times need to be short. Uh, he was very strong on that and that's become sort of very, part, very much part of the culture of the journal. Um, global readership, article downloads by region. It's interesting to look at this um, in the context of where we are now. Um, not a huge amount of content coming from Asia. Um, very little from India. Um, we know there's a huge amount of research being done in India. There's a lot of operations, uh, people, there's big schools. Um, and I think that's part of the reason that they've uh, had a focus on a regional um, structure. Uh, this is the slide that the, uh, um, the owners of the journal are very interested in, which is downloads over time. Uh, downloads have been going up significantly in the last 10 years. Impact factor, we do okay on impact factor metrics. Um, so we're kind of up there. We're quite strong in that area. Um, we're in our 53rd year. We have an acceptance rate of around 8%, um, which, is, which means that your paper it was interesting listening to what Tom Zen was saying and um, Tava as well. Um, but what I, you know, you quite often the question that you get, uh, particularly from say PhD students or people coming into an area and looking to publish, is what sorts of papers get published. Um, the way I think of it, just extending on what Zen was saying in particular, is that um, uh, papers have to make a contribution and they have to be valid. And the validity question is an order qualifier, and the contribution issue is an order winner. And if you don't get the order winner thing addressed, <coughs> um, then you start looking at for reasons to reject. Um, a paper can appear to make a contribution but not be valid, and a paper can be valid but make no contribution, if that makes sense. So think about it as being valid and a contribution. Okay, is there a potential contribution? Yes. Is it valid? That's also something that has to be ticked off. But I think of the validity issue as being a qualifier, um, something that you 
absolutely must tick off. The, the study has to be valid. Um, and the contribution issue is the winner. <coughs> the one that really gets you across the line that you publish. So we ranked fairly highly. We've got a, an average turnaround time of 90 days, which is kind of in the ballpark with everyone else. Uh, some noteworthy articles. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the authors and with some of these papers. These are the most cited articles. All right, this is, these are probably the two most interesting slides. Um, new directions the journal is uh, looking to pursue. Um, first is what's called an EDI, and it's not electronic data review change. It's an emerging discourse incubator. And uh, I've left some of these at the reception desk, um, at the registration desk. If any of you are registered, pick one of these up, and it describes how this EDI or discourse incubator works. Um, what we're trying to do is rather than have a special issue on an emerging topic, we're going to run, if you like, a 12 to 18 month period in which we'll publish papers um, on that topic. And we'll start off with um, some invited papers um, uh, in, a, in a specific issue, and then for 12 to 18 months beyond that time, We'll be inviting um, submissions on a specific topic area to the journal and we'll publish um, papers that meet the, cri the criteria of um, validity and um, contribution in that area over that 12 to 18 month period, time period. Um, the first topic uh, that we're going to be looking at is described on this flyer and it's, uh, it's a call for papers um, in uh, research where the focal actor in the network, in a supply chain network, is a not-for-profit firm. Okay, so it doesn't have to be pure not-for-profit, because I don't know if there is a pure not-for-profit, um, but um, uh, there has to be an important part of the, if you like, of the network that you're looking at has to be not necessarily driven by a profit motive. Uh, so that's an important um, uh, development and something that, um, that we're looking to promote. So if you're interested in that, pick up the flyer. And the second is um, we're looking to develop debate around methodological um, problems in our field because we're an empirical journal. Um, a lot of the methods that we use um, when you're trying to observe the world mm -hmm and document what you see and then make some sort of theoretical contribution based on what you see. Um, some of the methods that we use can be difficult to justify and highly problematic and subject to criticism. Um, so what we're looking to do over the next couple of years if you, is if you like, rather than um, uh, issue edicts from an ed editorial office saying there will be no more studies, for example, that use single respondents, um, what we would rather do is develop a debate in the, around the area um, and try and develop some guidelines. Uh, so we've got an issue coming out in January um, where we're looking at survey research in supply chain management. Survey research in this area is quite problematic um, because quite often we ask, for example, a single respondent to be an expert about everything that's going on in their supply chain, how integrated they are, whether they, their trading partners are working closely with them or not, etc. Um, so what we've done in the January issue is we've invited um, uh, pairs of associate editors to uh, write critical pieces, taking different perspectives on where um, different types of survey designs are more or less appropriate in supply chain research to create a debate. And we've also got an editorial coming out in, um, in January that um, tries to provide, if you like, a typology, uh, proposes a typology to give some guidance to researchers on um, where um, different types of survey designs are more or less appropriate in the context of supply chains, where, for example, a dyadic study is more appropriate compared to a single respondent study, etc. So I'd ask you to 
um, look out for those in the uh, uh, particularly look look for the January issue in this context. So that's um, general supply chain management. Now we're going to have um, Q and A.